No. Brompton, I thought we were like this. I thought we were like this. Brompton denied my warranty claim on my frame. <laughs>
For these reasons, we will not consider this case for warranty. The full warranty terms and conditions can be found on pages 35 and 36 of the owner's manual. A digital copy is available here, owner's manual C line. With all that said, I would recommend that the customer apply for the affiliates program here. Blah, 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 blah. This goes to the marketing team and they may be able to offer some sort of assistance or deal. In the case the customer does want to consider replacing the rear frame, below is the product information for the part we have available. The rear frame matte black, 174 to 249.99. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Kind regards, Merrill from Brompton Bicycle. Yeah, in the video, I do say that I put the Brompton through a great deal of stress. Have you ever rode in Denver, Brompton? <laughs> Any bike riding in Denver is under a great deal of stress. Let's just be real about this here, okay? Have you ever rode in pothole-ridden roads? Okay, any normal bike has to go through a great deal of stress on very improperly maintained roads because let's just face it, a lot of American cities, I don't know about you guys in Europe, I don't know about anybody else, I do know here in America, a lot of our politicians, you know, when they're cutting funding to things, they always seem to cut funding to our roadways and our infrastructure. So the chances of riding on well-paved roads and maintained streets, it's very iffy, especially here in major cities. Let's talk about the warranty for a second, okay? For that one reason alone, I understand Brompton saying, look, you didn't register the bike. It was covered under two-year frame warranty, so sorry about your luck. I get it, guys, okay? I get it. I understand that. I was buying a lot of bikes back then. I didn't expect to ride this bike as much as I did. I started liking it a lot. I started riding it a lot. Didn't expect it. And I guess somewhere down the line, I forgot to register the bike. You forgot! You forgot! You hear this guy? He forgot! But I understand Brompton denying the warranty claim just based off that alone. At that time I bought this Brompton, I wasn't expecting to really ride this bike that much. I wasn't expecting to fall in love with it the way I did. I bought this bike for one reason and one reason only, because I got sick and tired of flying with a full-size bike. I got sick and tired of disassembling my full-size bike, having to take the steering tube off, having to take the rack off, having to take the pedals off, having to take lots of stuff off that bike. You know, it takes a long time for us to dial in our bikes the way we like them, right? And then you gotta take it completely apart, box it up, what a nightmare. I almost didn't want to ever take my bike with me. So I figured, why not get a folding bike? And actually the first folding bike I ever bought was one of these old Dayhan uh, stowaways. I figured maybe I could buy that. That was a ratchet piece of crap. And uh, then I bought a Dayhan, uh, what do you call that thing? A Dayhan uh, Explorer. Same thing, basically the same bike, piece of crap. When I bought the Brompton and I rode this for the first time, I fell in love, guys. I was like, ooh, I fell in love with this bike, guys. It was, yeah, it was magical. I, it felt and rode like a full-size bike. Well, not quite, but it felt really good when you rode it. I had a lot of power to the pedals. I was riding and zipping around town. It was really fun to ride. Yeah, I was like, wow, you know, this is a bike I would love to travel with. This is a bike I would love to take on a plane and take somewhere and go ride around the city. But I started riding it more and more and more and it became my favorite bike to ride. Out of all of my bikes, this one and the Zizzo Forte are the two bikes I rode the most by far. And the only time I didn't ride it is when it was broke down and I actually had to get parts for it. So with all that being said, guys, I loved riding this bike. I rode it everywhere. I packed it. Now, since I live a car-free life, obviously I have luggage that I store up in my tea bag and I have a backpack on. I'm never over the 242 pounds weight limit on the bike. I'm never over that. I've got a scale in there. I've actually weighed myself. My backpack was like, 28 pounds or something like that. Fully loaded, it could get up to 30 depending on what I put in my backpack. I'm usually 175 pounds roughly. So uh, th there's never more than 20 pounds I think in the tea bag. So I'm still right under the Brompton uh, maximum weight limit. So I never had that issue. But I do ride the bike like I'm KOM hunting. I'm just like I ride it. I love going fast on this bike. It's a fun feeling. Isn't that what you want, Brompton? Isn't that what you want is people out riding your bikes? 
this isn't a bike that I just carry to the train station. I ride one mile to the train station, I carry it into the train station, and I baby it. I'm just kind of cruising along at eight miles an hour. I don't ride this bike like that. I ride this bike like I ride any other bike. I get on there and I zip around. And when I'm talking about stress, guys, I'm talking about stress in relation to a full-size bike. Okay, this bike takes a lot of stress, but a full-size bike takes a lot of stress. A full-size bike is zipping around the city, hitting potholes. I'm impressed that the folding bike can do it. And with all that said, I'm impressed that this lasted four years before any major frame damage happened. Okay, I, I'm, I have no complaints. I really don't. I have no complaints at all. None. Now, in the email, uh, they mentioned the Chubby Trailer. I guess Chuck forwarded my YouTube video to Brompton, and Brompton took a look at it. And, of course, you know, they're, oh yeah, he's using the Chubby Trailer. That's what broke the frame. One, I hardly ever used the Chubby Trailer. I used it on one bicycle tour when I went touring through Yellowstone. Okay, that was it. And then I've used it a couple times for some things that are in town here. But other than that, I rarely ever use that Chubby Trailer. It, Let's just be honest, it's a boat anchor. Now the Chubby Trailer is made by Radical Design. That thing is balanced. If you actually hold the hitch of the trailer, you hardly feel any weight on that thing. So it has no tongue weight. So it's not putting stress downward on the bicycle at all. It's just not doing that. Now I gotta say, now if you're going up a hill and you're pulling that trailer, it might put some stress laterally on the rear triangle. But like I said, guys, this trailer is perfectly balanced. Not only is it balanced, but it doesn't have a spring inside the hitch like most trailers do. It has a ball, which means that the bike can tilt on all of its axes without the trailer pulling the bike around like most trailers do. It is a very, very well-designed trailer. But I'm not saying that it isn't stressful on the rear triangle. That's why I limited using it. I only used it under certain situations and that was very, very rarely. That was not the cause of this frame issue, okay? They want to say it is because they're looking for that, oh, okay, that's what it is. You used the chubby trailer, that's what did it, that's what did it in. Well, if one time using the chubby trailer on a tour broke the frame, then I'm sorry, Brompton, your bikes are junk if that's the case. That's not the case. Your bikes aren't junk. Your bikes are really good bikes. And that chubby trailer use, that one tour I went on it, which is a five-day tour in Yellowstone National Park, that did not do in the rear triangle on this bike. Plus, it was several years ago. So with that being said, what caused the break? Well, the brake was caused by the stress of riding it all the time, riding it all over the place, riding it hard. And what I mean by hard is just riding it like, you know, I would ride any other bicycle. I don't ride casually, guys. I ride, I ride, you know, I'm always putting power to the pedals. So over a period of time, the metal is going to stress. I understand this. It's just simple metallurgy, okay? I understand this. I'm not saying nothing about it. I didn't get mad. I understood. I was actually very impressed that it lasted as long as it did. It gets that thumbs up, in my opinion, for as long as it lasted. But let's not grasp at straws, guys. The chubby trailer did not do that to this bike. And he's talking about the extreme amount of stress in the email. Come on, man. I ride the bike like I ride any other bike. Okay, that's the beauty of the Brompton. It's a folding bike that I can ride like any other bicycle. So the warranty being out was enough for them to deny the claim, okay? But then they looked at that video and they saw that and said, well, he misuses the bike and that's grounds for denying the warranty claim as well. So it was a double threat there, right? But let's just be honest, guys. I understand from a business perspective them denying my warranty claim on the frame, okay? What I don't understand is from a marketing perspective. They obviously saw I had a Brompton channel or a channel that's not, not exactly centered around Brompton, but Brompton is the centerpiece of all my folding bikes. It's the one that I feature on my channel, you know? So it was like, you would think just from a marketing perspective, they would have said, you know what? He does, you know, spread Brompton positivity around the globe. Maybe we'll just go ahead and replace his rear triangle. It's only 300 bucks, who cares? Send him a new triangle and tell them it's on us, you know? <laughs> I would have thought Brompton would do that. Obviously, they're not going to, and I don't think Brompton does that for anybody, so I'm not thinking I'm special or anything. I, I know I'm not special, but right now, until I buy another Brompton, um, this one's out of commission. 
So there won't be no more Brompton content for a little bit until I get another Brompton to replace this one. And will I buy another Brompton? Sure, guys, they're great bikes. I love Brompton, okay? I'm not saying anything bad about Brompton. Bromptons are awesome little bikes, and as much stress as this little bike has been through over the years, it has done very well, and I do appreciate all the fun and joy this bike has given me. But Brompton did disappoint me a little bit. They did disappoint me a little bit, you know? Um, like I said, you know, they could have threw the warranty claim through just to be nice, just to say, hey, thank you for all the videos you've made about our bicycles. You know, they could have done it as a, as a nice little gesture. None of that really matters. Nothing I say about the bikes really matters to Brompton themselves. They've got their own customer base and they don't really care one way or the other. It just makes me feel bad a little bit. So yeah, um, love the bikes. I'm going to be buying more Bromptons in the future and riding them. But as far as the company themselves, yeah, I mean, a little bit disappointed, a little bit. And the only reason why I even say it and the only reason why it's even a big deal because th I, this Brompton is special. This Brompton deserves to get fixed and continue riding on its journey, you know what I mean? Oh well, what are you gonna do? So guys, I'm gonna leave the video here. If you guys have any comments, questions, leave it in the comment and questions section. Slap a like on the video if you like it. And I will talk with you guys on the next video. See you guys later, bye.